In this video, I'm going to show you how you can fix the errors that you get when you're using the path DAX function in Power BI. We're going to go through it step by step together with an example so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So Path and any other similar functions to Path are very useful and it's something that I use on a regular basis. In my case, because I work on a lot of HR data, it's very useful in creating and finding reporting lines very easily. However, when you're using this function, you may encounter this type of error, which essentially stops you from seeing any value returned by this function, regardless if it's just a problem with one or two rows. So let me show you. So here's a very simplistic report of fake employees. Uh, we have ID, the name of the employee, as well as the ID of their supervisors. Now there's not a lot of employees in this list to so keep this simple, but imagine you have thousands of employees in a company. It's not that easy to eyeball any issues looking, just looking from this file. So let's start by loading this file into our Power BI report here. Get data from an Excel workbook, choose employees. We'll load the first sheet that we were looking at and hit transform which will open up Power Query right here. So from here, we're going to uh, use first row as headers that will promote our first row into column headers. We're going to select everything, Control A, transform and detect data type. So we're just gonna convert all of them into what their data type is meant to be. So if we hit close and apply, this will load this data into our Power BI report here. So path, if you didn't know already, is a DAX function that allows you to identify reporting lines uh, quite easily and it generates the path for you. So if I go to the data view here and let's create a new column, I'm gonna name this one path. And we'll use the path function here. It asks only for two things, the ID and the parent of that ID. So in this case, we'll just use the ID column, comma, and then supervisor ID for our second parameter, close. If you hit enter, here's what it will give you. It will give you the path of where that employee is in the organization hierarchy, all the way to the top. So you can see, for example, Taylor here, their ID is 12, Taylor reports to three, Tabby, which reports to the CEO, Andre, which is at the top of the chain and all of these sort of identify the reporting lines all the way to the top of the chain. So pretty handy um, DAX function. There's no errors in this one, um, but we wanted to simulate the error uh, just to show you how that would look like. So um, let's import another uh, sheet here from the same file, so instead of that first sheet, I have this incomplete one where I've simulated an error in the values. So let's go to Power Query once more. Let's do the same thing. So use first rows headers, select everything, control A, detect data type. We'll hit uh, close and apply. And at this point, as you will see, nothing is broken yet. So we'll create a new column create a path, we'll use the ID and the supervisor ID like this. And you will see that we will have an error here. So it says the value six in incomplete supervisor ID must also exist in the ID column. So basically what this says is that someone is reporting to someone with the number six as their ID but they don't actually exist in our list. So you can see here in our list of IDs, even if I sort this, well, it's already sorted, you will see that we don't have six here, even though we have people reporting to them. Typically, this kind of error comes up 
when supervisors leave the business and employees stay reporting to them even though they've already been removed from this list which would normally be just an active list of employees so fortunately this error tells us which reporting line it is and where to fix it so let's say we can see that for these people reporting on number six that's an error they need to be changed in the source file in order to fix the path itself so let's try to fix that ourselves actually so let's let's go to the incomplete here and let's say anyone reporting to six let's make them report to the ceo instead just so that we can make sure that the path is fixed so if we hit save now and uh, hit refresh in our Power BI report, you would imagine that would be fixed, but you can see it's not yet fixed. Let's have a look now. So it's telling us now that value seven in the supervisor, again, there's another supervisor that doesn't exist. So you can follow the same process that we've just done now, which is going back and forth to your source and fixing it, then refreshing because the error only shows you one error at a time. But this method is pretty time consuming. So instead of fixing it like this, there's a more efficient way to ensure that your path never fails in Power BI. So let's go back to our transform data here. And uh, let's delete this first one because we were just only using that for testing purposes anyway. So I'm just gonna name this one employees and keep it as our first query here. So the next thing that we want to do is create a duplicate of this employees file. We'll name this one just supervisors for now. We will disable the load so that it doesn't get loaded in our data model. It's not really necessary. We're only using it in Power Query for now. And from here, we'll simply leave it as it is, or you can, well, we only need one column here, which is the ID, and I'll show you why in a second. So remove other columns. And then from your employees query here, we'll simply go to combine, merge queries, put the supervisors as our second table, select the ID column. And here you select the supervisor ID. So what this merge will do is essentially check and make sure that any supervisor ID that we have here exists as an ID in our first ID column. So I'll show you what that uh, looks like now. So now that we've merged that, let's expand this merge that we've done. So supervisor ID, which uh, will just give us the IDs. But what you'll notice if I filter and just show the null values here, you'll see that it will automatically give us those rows that had some issues which means that we couldn't find them in our ID. Uh, so instead, it's just giving us null or empty, as well as the CEO, which obviously doesn't report to anyone. So what we can do here is to replace the supervisor ID. If they don't exist as an ID, we want to make sure that they are always reporting to someone that will always exist, which in this case, uh, let's make it the CEO at the moment. Uh, so what we can do is create a new custom column here. We'll just name this one supervisor and say if the supervisor ID, that one that we've just loaded, is null, then we'll make them report to our CEO at the top of the chain. Otherwise, just give me their supervisor ID. So it doesn't matter which one. So supervisor ID. It doesn't really matter which one. So what it will do is if we now filter just the empty ones here, you'll see that they will automatically have their supervisor assigned to our CEO, even our CEO reporting to itself, which I don't think it will break our uh, path anyway. So what we'll do is remove the other columns, supervisor ID, make sure this is a text or a number so that our path works supervisor ID the parents and the child both need to be the same data type for the path to work so now we simply hit uh, close and load and there you go so you can see 
that even if we have that error, so let's just sort this ascending, the path doesn't fail. So we have people that would normally be reporting to uh, to someone else that doesn't exist, six or seven. They are now reporting to our CEO, which will never fail. And what you'll notice here is even if I remove a few people here, so let's say we have people reporting to number four, even if we delete that one, let's say, and hit the refresh button here, you will see that those people don't cause the path to error out. It will simply just reassign them to report to our CEO. This method essentially ensures that your report is still working as you work out the long-term solution from the source system themselves. So it will essentially highlight to you that these people shouldn't be reporting to the supervisors without effectively breaking your report altogether. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to create this solution to ensure that your path function will never ever fail when you're using it in your Power BI reports. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.